Hi, my name is Shree, and I'm from the southwest suburbs of Chicago. Currently, I'm a first year computer science student at University College London. This is all I ever have to say before I see people give me the huh look. They ask, you came from the US to study computer science in the UK, especially as an undergraduate? Well, yeah, it all began with the university admissions last year. The American university admissions process is one of the lengthiest admission cycles around the world. We have to write a personal statement, fill many applications, you know, potentially make resumes with all of our extracurriculars, and write essays for every individual university that we apply to. And is this essay writing process that's so difficult, yet so insightful? Because the prompts range from statements like find X to something as grandiose as what's your ultimate goal in life? And it was during this phase of my life, I kept asking myself, I'm putting so much time and effort into crafting the best application that I can, now what if I get denied an offer? And I'm sure many of you felt that way too. So the answer to this question is quite important because our motivations and efforts rely heavily upon it. So I gave it quite some time, and I think I found a pretty good answer. I call it the King's Gambit. It's a framework of thought inspired by chess to help solve many of the issues on the road to self-defined success. It's the kings because you are the kings of your life. And it's a gambit because you may have to make some short-term sacrifices for long-term gains. I'll explain. Now imagine your life played out on a big board of chess. As you grow older, you and life take turns playing the game. It's you versus life. You're playing so that you can checkmate. But consider that checkmate to be your ultimate goal in life. Something that would satisfy you. Something that fulfills you. Now you're playing the game with these pieces that also have a significant value. For example, the king, as I mentioned earlier, represents you, the decision maker. The queen represents the friends and family who go out of their way to support you in the toughest of times. The rooks represent the teachers, colleagues, mentors, coaches, anyone who has a lasting impact on you, anyone that molds you into a better person. The bishops represent the opportunities and connections that surprise us in pretty unobvious ways. I think we could say diagonally. The knights represent luck because they jump in and out of squares and help us out in sticky situations. But then last but not least, we have the pawns, arguably some of the most important pieces of the game. These represent the daily actions that help get us closer to our ultimate dream. You see how all these pieces resemble the most important aspects of our lives? Friends, family, luck, opportunity, mentors, teachers. These are all extremely crucial for us to achieve our dreams. Now, whether we know it or not, we all tend to play the king's gambit with these pieces. You know those times that we all go to school, we study hard, or we train on the gym, we train on the track, go to the gym, we read a book, we do something that we really enjoy every single day that helps us get closer to our dreams. Now we have the friends and family, the queen, that are always there to support us in the toughest of times, when we face failure, when there are setbacks in our lives, or any other dark times are always there. And then we have the teachers and the mentors who give us valuable lessons, which we don't really make much of then, but then later on we figure out its significance and importance in our lives. And there are the rooks. Then we have the opportunities and connections that come in the form of an application to this job that you always wanted. Or the chance to try out for this basketball team. Or the chance to showcase your skills at a competition. It's all, it all comes in some unobvious ways. And then finally we have the knights. These are quite evidently are pretty important in our lives because I mean, you're sitting there watching me speak today and I'm lucky enough to be able to stand here and present my idea to you. So far we've talked about the layout of the board, but what really gives a king's gambit its power are the six key truths that I'm about to give you. Number one, it's the war and not the battle that's important. Little failures and setbacks here and there don't really mean much. Because think about it, if you continuously make the best move at every given turn, aren't you bound to get that check made or get as close as you possibly can? Now, if I wanted to be the best dancer in the world, it doesn't matter how hard it is for me to get there or how long it takes for me to get there. As long as I get there, I'm content. And if in case I don't get there, I did my 
personal best. I can't really do much else. So I'm still quite content. Number two, it's focus on your own game and not anybody else's. Because let everyone do their own thing. If your friends are studying engineering or medicine, that's okay. You could still be an artist, you could still be a dancer, you still, could still be a musician. At the end of the day, you're independent of them. Now, if all your friends are going out to party, it's okay for you to sit and study. But if all your friends are sitting and studying, it's okay for you to go out and party. As long as you're making the best move for yourself, it's okay if you're different from what they're doing because you're independent of them. Number three, it's, remote, it's important to remember that you are the king of your game, of your life. You can't just sit in your bed all day, think of the ideas you're going to do the very next day, because you actually have to execute it. Otherwise, the layout of the board never changes. At the same time, thinking like this also brings accountability for your consequences. Although trivial in the beginning of the game, minimizing negative consequences is actually quite crucial as you approach the end game. Number four, networking is a powerful tool. The strength and weak ties. Always reach out to whoever you can, whenever you can. There's always help out there. You always need to know when to look and where to look, but always ask for help. After all, that's how we learn how to improve our game, right? Number five, be grateful for your pieces. They don't have to be there for you. No one's obligated to do anything for anyone on this planet. And the fact that they're there means that they're extremely valuable for your victory. So embrace them and be grateful for them. Number six, everything has a finite timer. We all die inevitably. And so let's make the best use of the time that we have on this planet. I know for me, when my time runs out and somebody comes to inspect my game, I want them to think that I played one hell of a game. And that really motivates me. And these are the six key truths that really help push our gameplay to the next level. But then, I started wondering, is this really applicable to everyone? And I quickly realized that it actually is. The people considered the greatest of all time inspire us so much simply because of their resilience amidst adversity is so captivating. But the statement of resilience amidst disruption requires both the ability to remain resilient and an obstruction to hold value. But and both of these are extremely subjective if you think about it. For example, for Muhammad Ali, the desire to be the best boxer in the world was an instinct. For Kobe Bryant, the tenacity during basketball games comes naturally as well. For them, training, illnesses, failures, setbacks don't really mean much. And this is a learnable trait. Because something is only an obstruction if it's a hindrance. And the King's Gambit allows us to see things as mere inconveniences. And it makes us all resilient in a way. And this really helped me because during the admissions process, I told myself that I would happily attend and thrive at any university that I go to. So I kept trying to craft the best application that I can. And I was happy with that. But now that brings me to why I'm here. Well, the reason is I wanted to advance my pieces closer to the checkmate. You see, I want to be, the, I want to be a philanthropic technology entrepreneur with the philanthropy focus on increasing education and healthcare services to the developing countries. Now for this, I needed to escape the facade that living in America can create sometimes. But now that I'm here, I started placing my pieces strategically. I, even before university began, I reached out to my fellow peers and heard their first-hand accounts of their lives in different countries. That helped me gain a perspective on different societies in the world. At the same time, I reached out to my personal tutor and who's like a mentor for a group of students in my university, by the way. Um, and I discussed my ambitions and what opportunities there are here for me. Luckily, he was able to connect me with two startups whose goals mirrored my dreams. With one, I gained a technical experience as I used machine learning to analyze companies. With the other, I gained the management skills as I lead a team of eight to build a proof of concept that solves many of the issues that charities are facing today. Now for the entrepreneurship bit, I realized that I needed to know the quick moves of the business realm. And for that, I began researching markets, trends, and companies as I read articles from my university's FinTech review as the sole entrepreneurship correspondent. At the same time, as the first year representative, I learned how to organize events uh, for large groups of people for my university's engineering society. 
Now, in one event that we hosted, one of the speakers inspired me so much that I decided to take up a research project in AI with ethics to potentially help invent a solution for many of the speakers' company's problems. You see how my daily actions not only get me closer to my ultimate dream, but they're also heavily reinforced by the King's Gambit? When I was learning chess for the first time in middle school, the King's Gambit is one of the main openings that I attempted to master. It's a powerful way to open up the opponent's weaker king side for pounding attack later on. So I find it fitting that my version of the King's Gambit helps us become more resilient so that one day we can all checkmate. Thank you.